everybody. Today's practice problem comes from Essentials of Economics, second edition, by Paul Krugman, Robin Wells, and Catherine Grady. Today we're going to be doing chapter 5, problem number 17. The problem starts with the following. It says, all states impose excise taxes on gasoline. According to data from the Federal Highway Administration, the state of California imposes an excise tax of 18 cents per gallon of gasoline. In 2005, gasoline sales in California totaled 15.6 billion gallons. And the first part of the question asks, what was California's tax revenue from the gasoline excise tax? And this is actually pretty straightforward because we can do this without even drawing a diagram. Because if we're going to think about the government revenue from a tax, well, that's just going to be, well, if it's getting 18 cents per gallon on each gallon, then we can just say, oh, well, it's just the per gallon amount times how many gallons are being bought and sold, right? So in a more general sense, we can say that the government revenue is the amount of tax per unit times the number of units sold, which in our terminology is just the equilibrium quantity in the market when the tax is in place, so call this Q star sub T. So you can think of this as just the number of units sold. So then all we have to do is plug in the data from our question. And we say, oh, okay, 18 cents per gallon, so that's going to be our tax per unit, times, now I have a big number, 15.6 billion gallons. 15.6 billion. And all we have to do is multiply those numbers. Let me get out my handy dandy calculator here. And say, all right, let's figure out what this comes out to. So 0.18 times, I'm just going to do 15.6 for now. Because this is actually 2.808 billion dollars. And you could do a sanity check here. You could notice that 18 cents is about a fifth of a dollar. So we're basically dividing this 15.6 by 5, essentially. So we would get something that's in the neighborhood of $3 billion. And that's, in fact, what we see here. So what this is essentially saying is that the state of California is collecting $2.808 billion from consumers and producers in the gasoline market every year. The second question asked here actually asks us to do a little bit more economics. So the second part of the question says, if California doubled the excise tax, would tax revenue double? Why or why not? And it seems like actually a common mistake, for example, for policymakers to make is to say, oh, we'll just make the tax twice as big and we'll totally collect more revenue. They might collect more revenue. It would be a mistake to think that they'll collect twice as much revenue. And we can show exactly why that is. So to show that, let's draw a basic supply and demand diagram. And we'll think about what the relevant quantities are here for our gasoline market. So if we have the market for, in this case, gasoline in California, we can think about this market. We'll learn about the long run in a little while. But for now, we can just draw a short run supply and demand curve. And the, the conclusions that we're going to draw actually don't depend on whether we're talking about the short run or the long run. And we can see what's going on. So we draw our supply curve. We draw our demand curve. And we know a few things. We know that the free market pricing quantity is just here. It's some P star and some Q star. We know that when this 18 cent tax per gallon is put in place, because remember this Q is measured in gallons of gasoline, that what we're actually saying is that the price to the consumer is equal to whatever the producer is getting for the gasoline net of the tax plus the amount of tax, which in this case is 18 cents. 
Or put another way, there's an 18 cent wedge between the price that the consumer pays inclusive of, of the tax and the price that the producer receives net of the tax. And we notice that we're looking for a quantity where this is true. And that's going to be found somewhere about here. Let's say that this distance here, that this wedge is 18 cents. And we can say, well, this is the quantity that corresponds to producers and consumers either supplying or demanding the same amount when their prices differ by 18 cents and the consumer's price is bigger. And we would say that this is our equilibrium quantity with our tax, which is what we said was 15.6 billion here. And we could see if we wanted to show graphically what our government revenue looks like, we could actually just draw a rectangle like this. And this up here would be the price that the consumer pays. This would be that the price that the producer gets and that of the tax. And we could say that the area of this rectangle is equal to government revenue simply because the area of a rectangle is length times width. And what we're seeing here is that the area of this rectangle is this 18 cents, which is one of the dimensions, times 15.6 billion, which is exactly what we calculated here. Because this is in fact our T times our Q star sub T. So we can think about what happens when this tax doubles, when this tax goes from 18 cents to 36 cents, the tax revenue is still going to be this formula, except neither one of these numbers is going to be the same. Because what we're going to see if our tax doubles to 36 cents, now our equilibrium quantity is going to be at the point where there's a 36 cent wedge between the price that the consumer pays and the price that the producer gets, or in related terminology, the demand price and the supply price. We say, well now, when we're interested not in our 18 cent wedge, but in our 36 cent wedge, our equilibrium quantity with the tax, call this Q sub T2 star, is going to be lower, simply because larger taxes result in less economic activity, less being bought and sold. So when we see this, then we can again say that this rectangle here is our tax revenue. But this rectangle is not going to be twice as big as the original. So what we would say instead now, our government revenue sub 2, let's call it, is now 36 cents times something. So this part of it here, this first part, did in fact double, but we're multiplying this by something that's less than 15.6 billion. We don't know how much less, but what we're going to see if this thing is getting smaller and this is getting twice as big, that our government revenue in this second tax case is actually going to be less than twice this $2.808 billion. That we can't simply double our tax revenue by doubling the amount of the tax unless there's a reason in our market that the number of units sold, once we make the tax larger, wouldn't actually decrease. Technically, it's even possible to get less government revenue out of a tax once you make that tax bigger. So here we showed with certainty, or with near certainty, as long as we have an upward sloping supply curve and a downward sloping demand curve, that if we were to double the tax, we less than double our tax revenue. Under certain situations, it may even be the case that doubling our tax results even in less revenue than we started with before. 
And that would happen if our reduction in the quantity transacted was really big compared to the size of the tax increase. So for example here, if we doubled our tax from 18 cents to 36 cents, and our quantity went down, our equilibrium quantity with the tax decreased and was more than cut in half. So if this became something less than 15.6 divided by 2, we would actually get not only less than twice the revenue we started with, but even less than the revenue we started with in and of itself.